Hello everyone. Welcome to Geeta's classes. Uh, today we are going to see the topic estimation and in which uh, confidence interval. Before we go to confidence interval and hypothesis testing, we need to introduce introduce yet another continuous distribution called t-distribution. We have already seen in the previous classes the normal distribution. It is a symmetric this curve, symmetric continuous distribution with uh, two parameters. What are the parameters? This is mu. It will be centered, right? Mu and this deviation will be sigma, standard deviation sigma. So with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. This is general normal distribution. We have also seen standard normal distribution which is a normal distribution with the mean is equal to 0, mean centered as 0, z is equal to 0 and the standard deviation is also fixed as sigma is equal to 1. So, uh, if you say x, it follows normal distribution with mu and sigma, we write like this and if you say standard normal distribution, it follows normal distribution with mu 0 and standard deviation. These notations are important. If you use the variable x, then mu and sigma, if it is standard normal distribution, it is 0 and 1. Okay, It is centered as 0 and uh, standard deviation 1. Another continuous distribution similar to the uh, standard normal is the t distribution, also known as the student's t distribution. Students T distribution. And this is also like a standard normal distribution. This, it is a symmetric distribution centered at uh, 0. The center is at 0. And uh, however, the spread of the standard spread or the standard deviation of this distribution depends only on the single parameter called degrees of freedom. degrees of freedom or we say that df and as the degrees of freedom decrease uh, increases t distribution will become closer and closer to the it looks like standard normal distribution no so if the degrees of freedom is increasing then it will be almost like a normal standard normal distribution okay and this t distribution does not have any standalone business application but it is used as an interim tool that is very important tool to calculate confidence intervals and hypothesis testing and it has an associate probability density function we will say uh, we'll see later all these things so now uh, let us understand what is degrees of freedom okay so i told in uh, z that is normal distribution uh, we have two parameters one is mu and sigma that is mean and standard deviation these are the parameters that is they decide the normal curve similarly here the degrees of freedom is deciding the nature of the curve okay so what do you say what do you know about degrees of freedom how can we understand this degrees of freedom it is a parameter of t distribution first point another one is a mathematical constraint imposed by the given data okay and it is linked to the size of the data being used means larger set of data would have greater degrees of freedom okay so as the degrees of freedom increase the t distribution becomes closer and closer to the standard normal distribution these are the points you should know about t distribution right now uh, confidence interval a very useful way of incorporating uncertainty in business prediction is the confidence interval. The name, from the name itself you can understand. There are two uh, words in the uh, uh, definition that is confidence interval. There are two important words. One is interval and another one is confidence, right? So, a confidence interval, from that itself you can understand. So, a confidence interval is an interval with some confidence or probability attached to it okay so an interval for some unknown characteristic of the population data which may be of interest uh, to us right now let us see some example uh, suppose you if you consider u.s presidential election 
there are two candidates A and B who are contesting uh, for the election and and some pollsters uh, who based on surveying a sample of votes would like to predict the actual share of votes for a particular candidate okay so this is a population characteristic unknown to us before the election actually happens we don't know who is going to win yet we are interested in knowing something about it we want to know the results okay before itself okay we'll have some satisfaction so let us say candidates a and b are contesting and a pollster is interested in making a prediction about the percentage of votes that candidate a is likely to get okay he surveys and he will not go to each and every voter right that is not possible as we have seen in the previous examples which is not possible so what he uh, is doing is he surveys a random selection of 500 potential voters and asks them their voting preference between candidates a and b there are two candidates a and b so uh, the pollster is going for going to 500 voters 500 potential voters and he is surveying he is asking these 500 people to whom will you vote right so in that he found out and uh, the, here there is an assumption that um, voters are truthful they are not lying right if they lie we can't help this is just a um, survey right so let us say 300 voters will vote for a and 200 voters are voting for b that means what 60 percent because we have taken 500 people we have uh, surveyed 500 people and 300 voters are voting for a that means 60 percent of surveyed voters favored the candidate a now can you say that and this is an important distinction here is that that 60 percent is from a sample of voters we have taken 500 samples right from that we have found out that 60 percent are uh, uh, for a 60 percent people voted for a they are supporting a right would this 60 percent be equally valid for the entire population or not now here comes the uh, confident concept of confidence interval uh, is very helpful right now based on this example just given a 95 percent confidence interval for the actual uh, proportion of voters would be between 55.7 percent and 64.3 percent how to calculate this i'll tell you we'll see in the next topic okay when we are doing problems i'll tell you how to find out this the calculation part we i'll teach you right now uh, assume that this is the uh, interval we got we will saw, uh, see how this calculation is done okay let us interpret this confidence interval uh, now how uh, we are going to understand this so this interval is for the population proportion right that is the proportion of entire voting voting population that will vote for candidate A, right? So, or we can say there is a 95% uh, similarly, uh, okay, that we'll see later. That means, uh, this interval means 95% uh, of similarly constructed confidence, in, that is 1,500 sample I have taken. Similarly, whatever may be the 500 set of another uh, sample of 500, as we have seen in the previous one, previous example, <coughs> to find the uh, average salary, what we have done, I have taken uh, some 100 students and another uh, one of my friend uh, can take another sample like that. Similarly, if you construct any uh, similar confidence intervals, they will be likely to have the actual vote share for A almost this interval it will be in this interval only and there is that means there is a 0.95 probability that actual vote share for a will be uh, between 55.7 and 64.3 only okay that means now in this example what we have understood is uh, this 95 percent confidence interval means the in the middle we have 60 percent right exactly in the middle we have 60 percent and we are constructing the confidence interval that here it is minus 4.3 here 60 plus 4.3 will be 64.3 
and minus if you add 4.3 to this middle point you will get 64.3 and if you subtract the same value minus 4.3 we will get 55.7 right so this plus or minus 4.3 percentage is called the margin of error margin of error okay so uh, So in this we have seen two examples. In the first example, uh, we have in this presidential election this example prediction uh, predicting the proportion of votes, right? That means we are finding for some 500 people, and from that we are going to decide for the entire country, right? So proportion of votes for a particular candidate confidence interval for the population. We are trying to find out the uh, interval for population proportion confidence interval we are going to construct for population proportion now in the second one second example that is the previous example what we have seen average starting salary of all business students who graduated last year in the new york city here the confidence interval we were trying to find out the confidence interval of population mean okay so we, if you find out that mu mu plus or minus some value right so here and we have some formula here we are particularly we are telling this because there is a slight difference in the calculation of this <coughs> confidence interval for population proportion and for population mean okay that when we are calculating we'll see now i want to for making more understanding of this confidence interval i'll give you another example okay in the uh, hurricane season in Texas. Okay, so this example I have taken from Coursera. This is a nice example to understand uh, the uh, how <coughs> we are example. It is an example of application of confidence interval in real life. Okay, so here hurricanes season in Texas. That means hurricanes develop in the Gulf of Mexico, and some of them gather strength and make may strike or make a uh, landfall at the Tex uh, Texas coastline, okay, Texas coastline. In the Texas coastline, then this is the season, June to November is the season for hurricane, okay. So, hurricanes develop in that period only. Now, uh, even meteorologists and general people also, they are meteorologists and the weather persons will be interested in tracking and prediction of this um, development of uh, hurricanes okay so how they will uh, affect the people whether it will be striking the correct uh, correct person or not i'll explain now uh, so one such hurricane called ike uh, in the year 2008 it struck a uh, village called galveston and it caused a damage a lot of damage in the places houston and galveston okay and meteorologists were trying to predict the place where the hurricane will strike. When it is developing there, it will be, uh, they will try to predict, okay. And in, here, whether we can predict as a point or interval, I'll tell you, I'll explain now. See, we have the Texas coastline here. This is Texas coastline. And here we have the place called Houston. And the village called Galveston. Okay, so here outside the sea, Gulf of Mexico, and hurricanes develop in the season from June to November, they will be developed here. The hurricanes are developing here, and sometimes it will move towards the Texas coastline, sometimes it will not. Okay. So, one such coastline, one such uh, hurricane was developed in the year 2008, it is called Ike. Now, meteorologists and weather persons, they make predictions in terms of, now how will they, now can they predict exactly, because it is, in, it is, got a, it is getting influenced by so many other factors, right? In the nature so we can't predict exactly where it will go either in this direction or in this direction we can't see so now what they are trying to do is instead of say, telling a 
place they are trying to make predictions and they make predictions in terms of interval it is called the cone of prediction so what they have done here exactly is the interval prediction here okay that is this place will get uh, struck by the hurricane so here is this is another example of interval prediction right so instead of point we cannot say where it will go so it is a, instead of a finding a point predicting a point they are finding a interval so this is another important example real life example for uh, inter interval prediction okay now we'll see z statistic and t statistic and now <clears throat> these two are the basic building blocks of business statistics and they are needed to construct confidence intervals what do you mean by z statistic already we have seen this x bar minus mu by sigma by root of n so sometimes most of the time this sigma what is uh, x bar x bar is a sample statistic uh, sample uh, mean this is this is sample mean and mu is the uh, population mean and sigma is the population standard deviation and n is, n is the sample size right sometimes if sigma so if you know sigma value if sigma is known then we know we can uh, find out this z statistic sometimes most of the times z uh, sigma will not be known so if sigma is not known then what will you do uh, we will find out the same thing x bar minus mu divided by instead of sigma you take one sample no so from that you find out s s is nothing but the standard deviation of the sample right so divided by root n this is called the t statistic in the place of sigma if sigma is known we use z statistic if sigma is not known we use the t statistic and with here mu and sigma is the parameters and here n minus 1 is the degree of freedom i told you already for t we need degrees of freedom right n minus 1 degrees of freedom right and when we do the problem you will understand more clearly and in the next live class we can do more problems thank you so much for listening